Y'all, I want to uh, I want to thank everybody for coming out. Did you pay me to hold it down? As you can see from the group behind me, the World Health Organization is a huge concern. The reason my colleagues behind me are here is to call attention to something that is very serious and threatens this country. The reason is on May 21st and May 30th, there's a possibility that this president will be giving away our sovereignty. It's a possibility that Every several agencies have been compromised by China, which they have. What Tetros has done is undermine not only the WHO, but every country that's a member. We sent out a letter on May 10th to Kevin McCarthy to defund, for the United States to defund the World Health Organization. We are now putting in roughly $700 million. Which is, uh, which is unbelievable that this country is doing that. The reason is to call attention to it. The reason is to make sure that this country is not undermined by what Joe Biden and his administration is doing. I've got Frank Gaffney, who I don't think has come yet, but if you want a, you want, here he is, you want a good rundown of what the perils we're facing, you need to read this book. Frank was in the Reagan administration. He's a true patriot. And let me call on him to say a few words. The folks, we've got 18 House members that are going to speak. I'm going to ask y'all to be under a minute and a half. And because uh, I want everybody to be heard. Frank, would you come forward? Chinese Communist Party runs the World Health Organization. It runs the World Health Organization in furtherance of this long-standing objective of global governance. That's one world government. There's no room in the, United, in the world government for the United States of America. Certainly not the free America that we love. We've created a sovereignty coalition to fight against the World Health Organization's efforts to obtain global dominance through public health dominance. We are very of you, Congressman Norman, most especially, for taking the lead along with your colleagues to get us out of the World Health Organization before it finishes off America. Thank you, sir. I'd like to call on Dr. Ronnie Jackson. Ronnie, call after that. After you call on um, Chris, Chris Smith. Smith. Yes, sir. Thank you, uh, Ronnie Jackson, uh, 13th Congressional District of Texas. I'll be really brief here. I just want to say that uh, you know the World Health Organization is a corrupt organization. They're nothing more than a puppet for the Chinese government. We don't have to guess about that. We know that because we saw what happened shortly after COVID took place. We saw how they were complicit in trying to cover up what happened. How they stopped the flow of information. I'll tell you that the Biden administration it boggles my mind. This is just another one of the many reasons that they are one of the one of the many things that they've done to put America last and to, and to, to make us part of some world governance that they see us being part of in the future uh, we, we are we are a sovereign country uh, no other country is going to tell us another country will not determine how if and when we can protect ourselves during a future pandemic and no other country is, is going to use American taxpayer dollars as their piggy bank or their slush fund and, and spend it whenever and however they see fit uh, they've proven that, that, that they can't be trusted and we, we should place no confidence in them. I was initially uh, responsible for or in the last Congress for a bill called Protecting American Sovereignty Act that prohibited any American taxpayer dollars from being used in the so-called global pandemic treaty. That is something we should not be a part of. We should defund the WHO and we should have nothing to do with them in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Ronnie. I'd like to call on uh, Chris Smith now. Thank you. Chris Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I say to my colleagues, Bob, well, thank you so much for bringing us together. You know, on March 23rd, I asked Secretary of State Blinken and the House Foreign Affairs Committee about the Biden administration's push, and it's an aggressive push, to enter a binding international pandemic treaty 
that would cede American sovereignty to the World Health Organization. The Zero Jeff WHO Treaty, and there is a treaty here, and they're working on it, that Biden administrations and others are pushing, uh, starts off with very harsh criticism of the United States and said during the pandemic, COVID, we had a catastrophic failure in how we responded to it. Article 4 pays lip service to sovereignty and then completely overcomes that lip service by saying, quote, provided that activities within their jurisdiction or control do not cause damage to their people in other countries, which empowers WHO to step in and prescribe what each country would do. Article 10 of the treaty says the U.S. would be obligated to provide 20% of our medical supplies, including tests, vac vaccinations, and medications, to WHO. They say, we want it, we have to provide it. Blinken did not respond to my specific concerns. He said they're not working on a COVID treaty. Nobody asked him that. They're working on a so-called pandemic treaty. And again, we've got the draft right here. Uh, last May, the Biden administration offered its own proposal, granting new unilateral authority to WHO. Director General Tedros, and I've known him for years. He used to be the, the head of the health for, for uh, Ethiopia. He did an awful job and covered up a number of times on cholera while he's doing it and did it with COVID when he w who got his job from Xi Jinping in China was, was giving all kinds of false information uh, with regards to that pandemic. This is a treaty that must be stopped. I chair the Global Health Global Human Rights Committee. We'll be doing a hearing on it. Well, good afternoon. Harriet Hageman from the state of Wyoming. When I'm home traveling in Wyoming and hearing from constituents at my various town halls, I'm consistently asked why we would fund any organization that has clearly succumbed to the will of the CCP. In Wyoming, we don't believe in entering into agreements with foreign entities that would force Americans to give up our sovereignty. It is worth noting that the bulk of the WHO's budget comes from voluntary contributions donated by various countries and organizations. Throughout the past decade, the United States has donated billions of taxpayer dollars, making us the WHO's largest financial contributor. However, the actions and decisions taken by the WHO have provided no reason to continue funding their operations. As we know, the Chinese Communist Party has gained significant influence over the WHO's decisions. Indisputable evidence shows that COVID-19 originated from the Wuhan Institute of Virology, despite numerous contradictions to the natural origin theory and no evidence supporting pre-epidemic infections, the WHO has continued to unequivocally support the claims made by the CCP that the virus originated in a wet market. The reality is, is that international law does not trump our constitution. That's right. Biden cannot yes. force Americans to follow laws and regulations not passed by our own federal government. And we will not tolerate and stand for this America last agenda. Thank you. Tim Barchin, second. Congressional District of Tennessee. My office has gotten dozens of calls from concerned East Tennesseans who are concerned about what effect this so-called pandemic trade treaty would have on their freedoms. The World Health Organization has no right to tell hardworking Americans what the heck they do and with any kind of health care that they need to have. We are even funding the World Health Organization. Why, why the heck are we even funding them in the first place? The United States is their largest contributor. Since 2010, we've given over three and a half billion dollars. That's with a B. That doesn't mean a lot here, but I'll tell you what, in East Tennessee, it means a whole heck of a lot. The World Health Organization pandemic treaty is very vague. It, 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 it affects our sovereignty, and um, it could be exploited to, t to tell Americans what kind of health care that they need in the event of a global pandemic. My priority has always been protecting Americans' freedom to choose their own health care, and it also protects American companies that are investing in health care. The Biden administration, honestly, I don't think they could pour water out of a boot if the instructions were written on the dadgum heel. They don't care about our interests, and they don't share them. During the COVID-19 pandemic, the Biden administration wanted to give away important intellectual property related to U.S. companies' vaccine research. Last year, I introduced a bill to protect Americans' intellectual property from being wrongfully seized and handed over to the Communist Chinese Party, and I'll introduce that bill again this year. Thank you all very much for the opportunity to be here. And thank you all for being quiet over there.
Uh, Dr. Brian Babin. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Well, first off, just want to say thank you to Ralph Norman, our, our, our friend and colleague from South Carolina, and to Frank Gaffney. Thank you so much for uh, uh, this, uh, this important endeavor. I'm Brian Babin. I represent the 36th uh, Congressional District from the uh, great state of Texas. And in case it still needs to be said, the Chinese Communist Party is on a quest to supplant America as the world's number one superpower. And because of Joe Biden's weakness and aptitude and inability to lead, the CCP unfortunately is succeeding. For instance, hundreds of Americans will die today from Chinese fentanyl being pumped through our open southern borders. The CCP is buying up our farmland, pushing propaganda on our universities, stealing our technology, and spying on Americans through apps like TikTok. Biden is, is allowing the CCP's influence at every single turn. The World Health Organization is absolutely a prime example. Trump took us out. Biden has put us back in. And for what benefit? China runs it. If we continue to bow to globalist organizations who don't act in the interest of our own country, we will in, in continue to be hurt. Look no further than the WHO and how they handle COVID, the lockdowns, the repression, the lack of transparency and truth. The last thing we need is to be put under the heel of the World Health Organization uh, and lose our sovereignty. We cannot afford to surrender not another inch of our independence and autonomy to Beijing or to those who do its bidding. And so China, remember, is no longer our friend and really never was. And it's time that we started acting like that. Thank you very much, and I yield back. Thank you, Andy Biggs. Thank you very much, Andy Biggs from Arizona's 5th Congressional District. Thankful to Ralph Norman for organizing this and, and Frank Gaffney for uh, working as well. You know, the House Foreign Affairs Committee actually issued a report on CCP and its relationship with the World Health Organization with regard to COVID. Let's, let's see what they said. They said it's beyond doubt the CCP actively engaged in a cover-up designed to obfuscate data, hide relevant public health information, and suppress doctors and journalists who attempted to warn the world. They deliberately and repeatedly disregarded the obligations under the 2005 uh, treaty. What did the World Health Organization do? Well, this is what Director General Tedros did. He's how he responded to the CCP's cover-up by praising the CCP for their transparency, despite internal documents showing who frustration with the CCP's failure to share critical data and information about the virus. And they repeatedly, the WHO and G Director General Tedros repeatedly parroted CCP talking points and ignored conflicting information from reputable sources. And I'm just here to tell you, in the last bit, we've given three and a half billion dollars in, in aid or, uh, to support the World Health Organization. To what end? Undermining the United States sovereignty and the health of the world. They're getting into the bed with the Chinese Communist Party. And guess what? The Chinese Communist Party is no longer an economic competitor. They're a geopolitical adversary. Supporting the World Health Organization is detrimental to the United States. We should have nothing to do with them, and this administration better not try to enter into a treaty with them, ceding further sovereignty to this out-of-control multilateral institution. With that, I thank, I thank, uh, oh, by the way, I sponsored a bill to do just that, so hope you get out there. And now I'll turn it over to Mr. Kevin Hearn. It's great to be with you, and I thank my good friend Ralph Norman for holding this important press conference on America's involvement with the WHO. First, the WHO refused to hold China accountable for the loss of more than a million Americans and the thousands of Oklahomans due to COVID-19. I represent Oklahoma's first congressional district, and we consistently get calls every single day asking why we're still involved in the WHO. Why are we still there? And I'm proud to support Congressman Biggs' bill for us to pull out again. Because we have to remember, President Trump stood up to China, left the WHO, and restored American sovereignty. President Biden was quick to rejoin as soon as he took office because he is beholden to China. We're seeing that more and more and every day with what's going on in the Judiciary Committee and the Oversight Committee. And he's not committed to America, the country he leads. 
Biden and his liberal lackeys are working to deepen our ties with the WHO. Have we forgotten that the U.S. is a sovereign nation? We must not continue to surrender our authority to this defective organization. By choosing to rejoin the WHO, what has Biden achieved for the American people? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Biden must stop giving away more U.S. and state sovereignty to the WHO. He must stop infringing on American rights. Thank you. And next up is Tom Tiffany. Tom Tiffany, Wisconsin 7. Republicans in the House of Representatives are here standing up week after week, day after day, for American sovereignty. The World Health Organization cannot be trusted. Go back to December of 2019. The Taiwanese warned the WHO something unusual is going on in China and they needed to find out what it is. They did not do that. And now we're seeing reports in just the last 24 hours that are showing even more clearly that the communist Chinese government hid what was going on at that Wuhan lab. We have to get answers to that. Along with a few of my colleagues and my home state, Senator Johnson, we have introduced the no WHO pandemic agreement. And we hope that our colleagues here are going to, in the full United States Congress, that they're going to follow along with us to make sure that any agreement that is struck with the WHO with this administration, that it be subject to a treaty vote in the United States Senate. Thank you. Eli Crane. All right, thank you guys for coming out today. I'm going to try and be really brief. I definitely uh, don't support the WHO or our involvement in it. For me, it's a question of sovereignty and protecting the freedoms and liberty of the American people. I represent Arizona's 2nd Congressional District. Many of the folks in that district wondered why we were taking so many of our marching orders from this very corrupt town. They most certainly don't want to take their marching orders during the next medical crisis or pandemic from an even more corrupt global body like the WHO. And that's why I've supported multiple uh, pieces of legislation, the Who Withdraw Act from my colleague, Congressman Andy Biggs from Arizona, the no taxpayer funding for the World Health Organization from Chip Roy. And I will continue to support any piece of legislation, any resolution, any letter that will maintain our sovereignty and keep our freedom and liberty intact and keep us away from these global uh, organizations like the WHO who do not have the American people's best interests or their health in mind. Thank you. Paul Gosar. Well, thank you, everybody. I'm Paul Gosar from Arizona's uh, Ninth, di ninth the, District. I want to was. echo my colleagues' uh, uh, support today. Your did an ad it is time for the U.S. to exit the, the, the WHO. Why did that the WHO happen? was an embarrassment during this process of, of COVID-19 and the pandemic. They cozied up to China. They fell for China's lies. They even tried to cover them up. If the WHO had taken the virus seriously, earlier lies could have been saved. But you can't ask. The United States should not contribute a dime to its budget. It is outrageous that Joe Biden is working to give the WHO and its Director General more power over sovereign nations, including the United States. The United States and only the United States should decide the laws that bind us. We must not cede any further U.S. sovereignty to anyone, including the WHO. Unle unelected foreigners with legislative power over American citizens would have our founders rolling in their graves. And it must stop now. I thank you and prove it. Lauren Bobert. On day one, Biden made it clear he wasn't fit for the job when his regime brought the United States back into the World Health Organization. The results of Biden's failed foreign policy is absolutely astonishing. The Biden administration plans to surrender U.S. sovereignty to unelected bureaucrats at the World Health Organization. <laughs> to paint a clearer picture, the Biden administration is giving the same organization that is... 
Can we keep going around? Oh, yeah. Go ahead. To paint a clear picture, the Biden administration is giving the same organization that is controlled by the Chinese Communist Party the same affiliation with the World Economic Forum and the same organization that sabotaged an investigation into the origin of COVID. More control over the American people's lives. The WHO continues to spread lies and disinformation by praising China's response to the virus as transparent, which frankly isn't true. Before Biden took office, the WHO was unable to do anything without written permission from our government. Now, if Joe Biden gets his way, the WHO will have even more control over the most most private parts of our lives. This is not about public health. The WHO made it very clear they will censor anyone who does not agree with their agenda to control every aspect of people's lives. They want total control over vaccinations, digitalization of health records, and your travel. Under this plan, the Biden administration is adopting Marxism by distributing medicine based on equity. This is not what a constitutional republic looks like. This is a dictatorship, and we must defund the WHO and stop this radical agenda being put forward by the Biden administration. Eric Burleson. Eric Burleson. I'm Eric Burleson from Southwest Missouri. Um, and Southwest Missourians know that the World Health Organization is one of the most corrupt, incompetent, and after COVID-19, most thoroughly discredited institutions on the global stage. And yet, one of Joe Biden's first things that he did was to bring the United States back into this corrupt organization. This same institution is the one that pushed countries like the United States to shut down schools, shut down businesses, throw us into this economic inflation crisis that we're in, and force mandates into people's, or uh, vaccines in people's arms. They supported mask mandates all over the world, and they praised all of the lockdowns. This was the Chinese model. The World Health Organization is the lapdog for the Chinese Communist Party, and they echoed every single lie of the CCP. And even after the WHO lied about China's role in COVID, Joe Biden sent them hundreds of millions of our taxpayer dollars. Why? Because their policies are one and the same. Because Joe Biden doesn't believe the United States should be a sovereign entity in of itself, he wants to transfer our national sovereignty over to the decisions of this organization. That's why I'm proud to support Congressman Biggs and Chip Roy's bill. And I'd like to thank the Sovereignty Coalition for the work that they do and Congressman Norman for putting on this press conference. Thank you. And Mayor, Mayor Miller's next. Thank you. thank you, Congressman Norman, for bringing us together. It's crucial that we address concerns regarding the World Health Organization and its impact on our national sovereignty. The World Health Organization is bought and paid for by the Chinese Communist Party. Our hard-earned taxpayer dollars should not support a globalist organization that is controlled by China, undermines our national sovereignty, and threatens our rights. President Trump made the right decision to cut all funding and participation in this organization. And it's foolish for the Biden administration to place trust in an institution that repeated China's deceptive narratives regarding the origins of the pandemic in Wuhan. I stand proudly with my colleagues in calling for the United States to withdraw from the corrupt World Health Organization. This is deeply concerning to my constituents in Illinois and should be to all Americans. Thank you. My colleagues have brought up some very good points, and in the event that you still support, for some reason, the World Health Organization, I'd like to let you know exactly what you're supporting. In 2010, the WHO published international sexual education standards for children that included recommendations to teach, child, like literally infants to four-year-olds, about, and I quote, the right to explore nakedness 
and teach four to six year old six year olds about early childhood masturbation and the enjoyment and pleasures when touching one own body and genitals. What parent, what taxpayer thinks that this is normal? Frankly, if you're supporting this, I think that you're a pervert and you need to stay completely away from children. It gets worse though. One of the uh, whose partners on this guidance in the Netherlands helped write these standards and implemented them in country through curriculum that taught children as young as, young as five years old how to masturbate and about different sex techniques. One of these videos was so obscene and received such public backlash that they had to remove it altogether, of which we did watch it earlier today to ensure that we were circulating the correct information. But this is just a small part of the WHO's agenda to sexualize children. WHO is a mega donor to the International Planned Parenthood Fund, IPPF, a global sex edge organization that exists in over 146 countries and in 2017 put out a toolkit for children to normalize the prostitution of children under the age of 10 years old. Does anyone here agree with that? I would hope not. You know, we have a big obligation here in our country and as members of Congress to ensure that our funding is especially not going to anything that would hurt children and that is exactly why we're supporting defunding the bill. Thank you. I don't see Dan Bishop here. Um, I want to call on Reggie, who's been real active with Frank, but just what you witness I, is gives me hope. I know what we're doing is right. That guy trying to interrupt this is totally insane. I know we're doing something right. Reggie, you want to come up? Thank you so much, Representative Norman. My name is Reggie Little John. I am the founder and president of Women's Rights Without Frontiers and a co-founder uh, with of the Sovereignty Coalition. And I'm here to say that. It's becoming more and more apparent that the World Health Organization functions basically as a front organization for the Chinese Communist Party. In the pandemic treaty that they are currently negotiating, there is a section on surveillance, detailed surveillance of people, plants, animals, and the environment, and also censorship, censoring, canceling anyone who disagrees with their narrative. How will they enforce it? They could enforce it the way that it was enforced in Canada, by simply cutting people off from their credit cards and their bank accounts. That's a good way to silence dissent. I also want to talk about something that is called One Health. This is something that people are not even really aware of yet, but it's this nice sounding um, idea that is the link between human health, animal health, plant health, and the environment and they what, what they want is they want to be able to surveil and censor us on any aspect of human life on earth so it is imperative that we withdraw now from the world health organization otherwise it's the death knell of democracy thank you right our, our last speaker is congressman glenn Grothman. glenn well as we lose our freedoms here, I don't think, I, I hate to be critical here, but it's important for members of the press to educate the public what's at stake. Okay, now in our country, we want to have as many decisions as possible made at the state and local level, right? Joe Biden's going, President Biden's going the opposite way. He wants our health decisions to be made on an international level where there's no congressman to call the complaint or to be held accountable. And if you've heard these other speakers today, you know what we have here. We're turning over how to deal with the next pandemic or whatever we want to deal with to an organization dominated by the communist Chinese and a variety of other dictatorships around the globe. Do we want to turn our health over to international groups? It's like getting rid of our sovereignty altogether. It's important, however, for the press to educate the public what's at stake here so they can be appropriately outraged. Because otherwise what's going to happen, we're going to have another pandemic uh, two years from now or five years from now, and they're going to say, this is what we have to do. I want to call my congressman. Your congressman has nothing to do with it. This has been determined by an organization. The preferred treatment has been determined by a communist organization on the other side of the world. So I beg for the press to pay attention to what Congressman Norman, who by the way is underrated and tremendous, uh, what Congressman Norman and the other congressmen have been saying today. Please educate the public. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn. Clay Higgins.
Clay Higgins from Louisiana, Congressman. All right. Woo, Clay. Thank you, Rob. Ladies and gentlemen, the World Health Organization has a right to exist internationally. I don't have any problems with world leaders or scientists you know, conferring with that body and coming to their conclusions of what they believe is accurate and scientifically sound and, and most advantageous to posture in their organization's advice regarding how to respond to potential pandemics as time unfolds. But they don't run this country, and I don't trust them. So they have the right to exist, but I have the right to oppose their oppressive actions when it comes to interfering with individual Americans' rights and freedoms. So, yeah, responding to a pandemic should require a great deal of discussion and truthful, candid, honest uh, debate, comparing scientific uh, studies from the best doctors around the world. No problem. But this is the United States of America. We're a representative republic, and we the people run this thing. So you should make your decisions with you and your family and your doctor regarding your business and your home, your interaction, whether or not you want to maintain uh, personal interactions during a pandemic, whether your kid can go to school, etc. If you want to get a vax, get it. You don't, don't. That's called freedom. The World Health Organization should have zero impact regarding my freedom and yours. I thank Ralph Norman, my colleague. Thank you, Clay. Um, we'll take a few questions. Anybody have some questions? John. Yeah, and it's not just eliminate funding with which would, would withdraw us if we cut the funding off. Um, the other thing is to make get the awareness for what this document does to this country and what this administration is doing to America. And that's what the press, that's what we hope you will do. Research this. My office has been flooded with calls. My colleagues behind us have been flooded with calls. The meeting, as I mentioned, is, is set for May 21st 1st through the 30th. So it's urgent to get the message out, it's urgent to get out of this organization, and it's urgent to call them out for what they are, which is a Chinese-dominated organization. And forgive me, there was a lot of noise. Chip Roy has got a bill, and I think Andy Biggs, and Andy Biggs has got a bill, which will do the same, same things we're talking about. Anybody else want to have any comments on this? Okay, I just want to thank you for coming out. I want to thank all my colleagues. And, uh, again, we're doing something right with what we have. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Yeah, we're going to get a picture before you guys leave. Everyone, you're going to get a photo. Get a picture. Hey, we just had to get all the pictures you want. Thank you. Thank you. A Russian man claiming to hold top-level secrets about Russian advanced bombers has just turned up at the U.S. southern border, seeking asylum. The man claims to have been an engineer at a production facility over in the city of Kazan, and he says that he possesses top-secret information about the White Swan Tu-160 which is the most advanced bomber in the Russian arsenal. U.S. border officials, they interviewed the man, and they determined that his story was in fact credible and eventually passed him off to the FBI, who are still in the process of interrogating him right now. However, analysts have pointed out that the fact that the story was even leaked to the public is an indication that perhaps the American government is encouraging other Russians who also hold top-level secrets to also escape to America. And if you thought that was interesting, well then you should click on that button below this video and check out Epic TV, one of the best no censorship video platforms on the internet. On there you will find awesome programs like American Thought Leaders. We've now been for two years 
trying to obtain the unredacted emails. We're down to the last 50 pages. So that's where all the incriminating evidence is. Crossroads, one of the big things happening right now. It's what's taking place with Russia and China. Counterpunch. You will see information you've never seen anywhere else. Facts matter. I'm your host, Roman from the Epic Times. Stay informed, most importantly. Stay as well as a plethora of great documentaries, wholesome movies that you can enjoy with your whole family. If I reach one hour, I accomplish something. Cooking programs, and my absolute favorite, programs about traditional art and traditional music, which can honestly uplift your mood and fill you with hope for the future. And the best thing about Epic TV, at least in my opinion, is that there's no corporate backing and there's no allegiance to some anti-American agenda. How dare you come to this peaceful community and try to scam these people? What the hell are you talking about? But rather, it's just good, honest, wholesome content that's based in truth and tradition. I saw it. It was incredible. Something that you can actually sit down with your whole family and enjoy knowing that some ideology is not about to be pushed upon you. And who's fighting it? We're fighting it here at Epoch Times, and we need to keep bringing you the news. And so again, if you'd like to check out Epic TV, just click on that button below this video. You and your family will absolutely love it.